one of the things I was talking with Kevin about earlier. One of the things I want to speak about is perspective and perception. And uh, as he was teaching me, you know, I wanted to, mine was about perception. And he's like, well, you know, they go hand in hand. Uh, perception is changed by your perspective. He always smacks him in the mouth. Yeah, stuff, yeah. Man. Like, <laughs> for sure. Um, but when you think about it, without God, but without real, true trust and faith in God, your perception of that illness and those things that attack you are imminent to you. You know what I mean? They become such a, because I mean, like, when, I, when I'm in the world, when I was out in the world, when I was doing crazy things, there was no way that this right now, what we're doing right now, being on this radio station, was possible for God. Like me. You know, my perspective was based on my knowledge and my education, which was world. Mm -hmm. When you change that from within, you learn to step out on faith. Right. And your perception has changed because you decided to change your perspective. It's so crazy to understand that. Um, but I mean, those two stories alone, God was like, I got stuff for you to do. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm going to tell you about it. Are you going, are you going to, what, what, they, what did he say? What's the scripture? Um, faith is, uh, not by sight, but by right. through hearing, right? Right. right. The word. So he, he, he told you, he didn't really show you anything yet. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he told you, so it's up to you to take that step. And, and literally that's what we're doing. I mean, now you, you got a radio right, show, right, and you're, you're doing these things in the community, you know what I mean, and reaching out, and I mean, you can spend some time telling about the struggles that your family is just went through, you know, right. and, and, and the, the teaching and the healing that Brother Steve just is receiving, you know what I mean, and, and just to watch that, I mean, some of the praise and worship group, I mean, look, we're just, we're, we're super blessed. Mm -hmm. to have both of you, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, he could have done it by himself, could have done it if you weren't there to, to encourage, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's amazing to watch how faith actually works. Mm -hmm. It's super cool. And in reference to what you just said, you know, unbeknownst to me, that Sandy, well, Sandy had told me she had went to see you in jail, but I didn't know what she spoke to you. Mm -hmm. And you're right, I don't remember what I said to you, but I can tell you this, that was a confirmation. And it's, I've been at New Hope since December of 2017, and here we are, April of 2019. So that was your confirmation, and now look where you sit. Ah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so still your perception about yourself was not quite there, but that says... No, it's still, it, it, it's really, it's really still not. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, like, my perspective is changing you know yes, I mean? it is. Because I am understanding things now and yeah, doing things yeah. to make changes. In the you time know? that I've known you, I've seen you throw leaps and bounds. Mm. That's so I great. Mean, no, it's facts. In the time <laughs> that I've known you, I have. And oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Listen, it's showing amazing. about me, guys. Stop no, no. <laughs> it's right. It's about what well, God is doing yes. through right. and to yes. all of us. Yes. Like you what said, it you is. can't see it, but everybody around you can. And that's, right. that's your testimony. And you surrender. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. We can say, you know, I surrender all, but do we really surrender all? Right. right. But when we really surrender all, that's when things start happening. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. that's what you did because I witnessed it. <laughs> and then you would come up to me and say, pray about little things, you know, and I would say, sure, I'll pray about it. But I knew God had you in the palm of his hand and mm -hmm. he was going to use you. Not just as a drummer right. at New Hope, mm -hmm. but there was more to it. Right. Yeah. So and funny because there was a there was a point in time where I thought I was like, that's it. All right, man. I play drums at school. That's where I'm at. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but even with that, you you do a great job. Exactly. So <laughs> even with that, that talent, if that was the only talent that he gave you to use, you would have used it. So that's that's great. That's good. Cool. Yeah. So well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, one one thing I do want to talk about. Um, we got a while now, so. The reason we do this is to help folks get through things and to help them see their perspective, their perception of things, and, and, and what God really does. So I really want to talk about, for some reason, I just got the word of feeling stuck. 
what about the times? And this is, can go with exactly what we're talking about. You know, I was at a point to where I felt super stuck. Um, a lot of a lot of what I do comes from my transparency because I'm not afraid to tell really any story. You know what I mean about me or whatever, because um, it's truth. It's life. It is what has happened. And without knowing the truth, you can't see what God's really doing. You know, if I come at you all the time, oh, yeah, praise God, he's doing his thing, blah, blah, blah. You're like, I know he will, but what about me? It's usually what the next person says. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you that, man, I've done some foul stuff, and, you know, I've lost a, a great relationship. I lost my relationship with my kids. I lost two brand new cars because I couldn't put the bottle down and all this bunch of stuff. I tell you that, somebody's like, oh, well, I can't put the bottle down. Like, and I'm like, ah, well, check out this guy. You know what I mean? If I really start. So anyway. I want to talk about those times that when you felt stuck and um, Kevin, I'll ask you, is there ever been a time that you really felt stuck and not that you, I don't think that anybody's ever, nobody in this room anyway has ever been like, God doesn't exist to me or question that he exists. But is there a time to where you really felt tested? You really didn't know if you had the strength to go on or if you could really dive deep or anything like that. Has anything like that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I, I came to New Hope in 2006, okay? And shout out to my brother Kevin. Through him, I met him at a laundry mat in Newport, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. They're doing my laundry, and there comes this man with a basket full of clothes, one basket full of clothes, two ladies there. They start talking about him. Hey, here's that pastor from Newport, you know, and da 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 da. And he's got four kids. And I'm like, pastor from Newport. And I had just been saying, my life is about to change. I'm going to be turning over a new leaf. I was saying that, I was professing that out loud in my home. So here I am in this laundry mat, and here comes this guy with his basket of clothes, and they're talking about him as he's coming in the door and about his kids, and I'm thinking, okay, God, he's got one basket of clothes and he's got four kids. What's he doing here with one basket of clothes? So I'm doing my laundry, and he asked if he could, uh, you know, talk with me, invited me to New Hope. I started going to New Hope. I was there from 2006 until 2010, and I left um, and went back to the wall. Well... On March the 2nd, 2013, was the day, it, it wasn't the actual day, but it was the day what had I had been asking the Lord to do. I asked the Lord to take my life, that I was done. I was done struggling. I didn't want to go on. Um, I have, uh, I have... I have two children, and my youngest uh, functions as an addict to this day on the street, you know. And I was just done. I was just done fighting the fight to prop him up, you know. So I was in a bar, and I had a drink. And the next thing I knew, I felt like I was going to pass out. Went out the back door to get some air, and the last thing I remember saying was, I just need to lay down. I was found face down, unresponsive, and ended up with a skull fracture and a severe concussion mm. in ICU for two days. So, yeah. Yeah. That was a little stuck. That was a little stuck. <laughs> and I was Can, talking... Do you remember, do you happen to remember what your first thoughts were when you woke up? You remember that at all? Or take you a little bit to get back from here? Uh, it was touch and go there for... With those two days, I know that, um, you know, under the care of a neurosurgeon, trying to figure out if he's going to have to drill a hole in my skull to release the pressure that was building. Um, getting home, I just wanted so desperately for the dizziness to go. It took about nine months for the dizziness to go. And that's, you know, turning over in bed and feeling like the bed was on top of you. That mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. So, um, my first words. No, I, I don't, really don't remember. I yeah. don't remember, but I will tell you the words that was recently spoke to me by our pastor, Pastor Paula. I said, you know, 
I can't believe that I really, where I am today versus where I was six years ago. And she said to me, God did take your life. He took it in a new direction. Mm. Hey, man, that woman. He talked about yeah. the house. And I was like, wow, oh, I never looked at it like that. <laughs> and that's what he did. So. It's so weird. I mean, Father gets so mad at me sometimes. Um, right for so. But uh, <laughs> some of the things that she says, they're just so profound. You know, one of the things that I had recalled as I was writing out what I was going to speak about tonight. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of her stuff is just so profound and true. And that's one thing that I really love about, or I love about New Hope Christian Center, um, as well as the refinery in Nazarene. I mean, they're real. It's not about, it's not a show. It's oh. not anything other than scripture, real life. You know, that's why they call it the spiritual hospital. I mean, uh, hearing the sermon, um, Lonnie, what's his last name? Glosser. Glosser. Um, I went out there and listened to, listened to that. Same deal. I mean, he's uh, he hasn't lived like the worldly life, but the life that he has lived, he's had issues, he's done things, and he speaks from the heart. And it's a very scripturally based, real sermon. Like, you go to some places and they, you know, want you to leave a smile or whatever. Um, New Hope and Refinery, they want you to leave thinking about how can I build on this stuff throughout the week. You know what I mean? And that's, uh, it's things like that, things like what Paula said to you, that make these places so special to us. Right. Uh, and I think that they, it's uh, more of that's needed. You know, and that's one reason that we do what we do here is, uh, I made the comment earlier, preaching to the choir, you know, say the same old cliche things and, and, you know, read the same scriptures and don't act like that it's living and that it can apply to anyone. It does apply to everyone. When you don't act like that, you're secluding yourself. You're separating yourself. So a person in a bar doesn't think that it's attainable, you know. Um, the person walking down the street sees me with my purple shirt and suspenders on. They put me in a category, yeah. as we put them in a category. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing what you ladies are doing, let's carry the cross down the road so that everybody can know who this guy is. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, so funny. How long is this time together? Because we're speaking all night about perception of people. It's so mm -hmm. funny. <laughs> Well, um, what I, I would like, this is my heart because my husband and I, I don't think, well, I know Frank wasn't there at the time. We were attending New Hope. Um, and my husband was in the Crazy Lordship, and I was doing a lot of, um, I was doing the drama. I, was on, I don't remember all the things. But, and I'm just going to be an open book right now. I was doing it because I was the oldest child, and I was taught that if you step up, you do it. And I was doing it out of, not because from my heart, but I was doing it like a duty because because that's the way I was taught. Like you don't go and say you're going to do something you. and then not do it. I'm right. telling you, I'm right. telling you, so, I so understand. <laughs> so I I got burnt out. And so I told my husband, I said, we went to a different church. And this falls in line because we left that church. Didn't even really speak to it with my husband. I was like, really? Right. And my husband was the time, you know, everyone knows Steve here. Oh, so Steve's yeah. like, sure, whatever. Whatever you want. <laughs> okay. I don't want you to explode. So, <laughs> so we did. We left. We went to the church. And what was so ironic when I was put in the hospital in 2013, my sisters were attending New Hope. So they got back to Polly and Chuck. And Polly and Chuck knew my grandparents. Well, actually, my grandmother, my father knew. Yeah. My grandfather had passed and my grandmother had given them a prophetic word that said you will be a minister a missionary in russia and he laughed at her he was <laughs> so so anyway they came to see me and at the hospital and i think steve looked at me and goes I think we need to go back. so when i say not only was i healed physically i was healed spiritually because when i went back it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about duty. It mm -hmm. was about Lord leading, right. surrendering Amen. to Lord, 
you lead me. This is not about me. And when I started releasing that, things started happening. Like, it, you know, of course, I'm getting word, and I'm like, what does this mean? And it's a shoe, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, give me a scripture to back it up. Because then I know it's not me, you know? Right. So that's, I was stuck in doing it for me. Yeah. Out of obligation, thinking, well, you know, I was taught. Not that that's a wrong thing to do. You should right. do what you're taught, you know, and your obligations are your obligations. But it wasn't like I was saying, okay, Lord, this is not about me. If this is what you want me to do, if this aligns with my will, I mean, your will, please use me in right. this direction. Well, that's, just, that's that's you getting deeper, and that you taking the, the responsibility of your Christianity, of your spirituality, and saying, I want more. I want to do more. So the first thing, and I, a lot of people make this mistake, the first thing you did was what you did. Exactly. And you were like, what do I need to do? Is this me? What I want to do your will. And by submitting to that, God was like, gotcha. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what I love about it. Um, just this um, past couple of weeks, you know, I've been doing more of that. Like, the more I look, and this is why we don't need to think about it. We need to check ourselves out. Because there's right. so much yes. trash in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Once we get one thing figured out, we see how many other trash bags are full. Right. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you leave my backyard alone and go clean up your own. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. I'm working on mine. <laughs> True. You go work on yours. <laughs> but, um, so, and, and Brother Kevin, like, uh, cheese and rice, I cannot just say, I can't say enough about not only does the man kind of put his his own stuff and his own family aside for everybody else. Um, but it's uh, a, a true spirit, a true God for the man. And it, it's, it's so cool to have an actual person and not, not a pastor. And, and I don't mean that in any, in any other way except for Kevin's Kevin. A friend. Kevin truly a is, a, is, a, is a friend that listens right. to God and will give you a real answer. Right. And not a church answer, right? If that makes sense, right? Yes, yes. Um, but he will back it up with scripture. Right. Oh, every time, exactly. every time. Exactly. And that's the best part. Well, know? and then, so it's it's crazy because like whenever you ask him a question, you see his eyes roll around. I'm like, he's going through the Rolodex right now, and it's not he's about to hit me with a whole bunch of truth. Um, but learning these past uh, uh, these past couple of weeks, uh, especially have, have hit me hard um, with. Learning what community is and, and learning how to build that. And when he speaks on, you know, reach out to another person, blah, 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 I really start to think about, I don't think, I don't look around the room and say, well, I'm going to talk to them, I'm going to talk to them. I look at me and I'm like, why haven't I talked to them? Mm-hmm. What, what, is, what is stopping me from reaching out and talking to somebody? <clears throat> Excuse me. So then I start thinking about, why don't I talk to the people that I call friends a lot? Or some of the people that I'm closest to first. You know, we don't really, there are some people that I'm close to that I don't have a strong relationship with. It's not strong enough. And, and uh, so Sunday, uh, well, last week I wrote, I reached out to a person and just, hey man, hope your day's going good. I haven't talked to you much or whatever. And I have thoughts and things that go into why I feel that way. But Kevin said something, and Polly reiterated when she uh, made an illustration about painting the wall, Billy painting the wall downstairs or whatever. Maybe I don't like the color that she painted, but the person is more important than the circumstance. You know, and so when I started thinking about that, I'm like, I let the circumstance. And nine times out of ten, you don't even know the story. You made up something in your head, and you portrayed that on them. Right. And made yourself mad. Now your blood pressure's up. You don't even know what's going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> true. True. Exactly. So like, I started thinking about this. So I just reached out to this person. Hey, man, I haven't talked to you. Blah blah. blah. Hope you're having a good day. Um, talk to you later. And I pray, the Lord, hey, I, I want to continue this. I don't want this just to be a one-time emotional thing or whatever. And uh, Sunday, uh, I did the same thing with a person that uh, I know of hurt, and I, I just. Didn't really ask for forgiveness. I just said, I'm sorry. You know, um, tired of all the finger pointing. And uh, he said, you know, I can do more too or whatever. I was like, I don't even want to hear that. I got to do what I can do. You know what I mean? Just to make this right and to bond us together. Mm -hmm. You know, and 
And I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. I'm just saying that when you decide to dive deep, when you really decide to grow the kingdom, you got to start with you, you know? And, and there are so many avenues that you can do. I, I had, at one point in time, you write down, uh, I was doing, uh, I was doing um, inventory, self-inventory, right? And you have to make these amends to people or whatever. So you write down these four categories. Now, later, maybe, never. Um, the ones in now, I did. There's no reason, right? Yeah. Like, and then the maybes, you kind of think about for a little bit. Like, okay, I'm really trying to take this thing seriously. You make those. The later, eh. You know, you kind of put that off. And this is where I really had to make a choice. I was like, I can I can run through these steps, you know, just go ahead, whatever, get over it. Or I can really take time to look at these things and let God work on me through this without me just doing it and nothing actually happening on the inside. Of it. And so, uh, and it's so weird how these things happen. Um, first, understanding how selfish I've been through years or whatever. Um, my children's mom was on the network. Her mother was in the nether. Um, and the way that that turned out, she got sick, right? And she, uh, she, she didn't call me. I was texting her, and she's like, "Oh, I'm in the hospital, blah blah blah. I got cancer, or something." Like that. And I'm like, "Oh, snaps, man!" And I'm like, "Lord, what are you gonna do?" And he said, "Duck." I text her and I was I was thinking the whole time, she's not gonna need a room number, so I'm not gonna have to worry about it. Well, I try, Lord, you know what I mean? Like that's what it was good. <laughs> no, she texts, yeah, come on up, yeah, if you wanna come, blah blah blah. And I'm like, really? really? <laughs> okay. So I came home. I think that was the day you got the hand. You, sure. you, you you took me there and then you went and got Dalton. I did, and back, then right? come back and pick you up. Yeah. Um, I did. so <laughs> I had to run home because I was like, all right, if I'm gonna go, I had this book of hundred prayers, right? I'm gonna go. All right, I'll, uh, I'll take these up there or whatever. And I literally, I am not lying. When I get through the hallway, I am shaking like a leaf because all of the crap that I did to her um, through our years and, and all the things we haven't resolved is one thing. But in that room was about five other people who hate me most in life because of those things. Her mom, her dad, her new boyfriend. I think her sister was there. All the little, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, oh, like, I'm really, like, really, Lord, like, all at once. All this at once. <laughs> and, like, I'm literally, I'm shaking. But I'm like, I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. And I go to, I get, like, right up to the door. The door opens. Her mom, face to face. They call me Mommy Lady Brian. Sarah refuses to call me Frank. But anyway, she said, uh, Brian, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> no, but uh, I was like, I just, is, is she okay? Is she awake? She was like, well, I don't know. She wanted to see you. And she turned around and went inside, and I was like, no, she told me where she was at. So I was like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, whatever. Um, so she comes she comes out. I'm going to get something. Yeah, she said, you know. I said, okay. One battle down. Here we go. Right. All right. <laughs> so I go, and I just sit there, and like, I, I wanted to cry so bad. Right then and there, did a lot for me. Um, she's kind of making a joke, and Morphine kind of got her a little bit, you know what I mean? But she's, Sarah is one of the strongest people I've ever met in my life. Um, one, all the stuff that I put her through, you know, she's made it. She basically raised three kids on her own, you know, and uh, put herself through school, um, got a job, maintained, and maintained nice things. You know what I mean? With uh, me being a, a jerk and inconsistent. <laughs> for sure. So, uh, big props to her for that. And um, so, anyway, I'm just looking at her and just like, man. I don't know what I would do if I lost her. You know what I mean? And nothing, nothing like any more than a great part of my life, my kid's mother. There's no way I can compare to what she's done for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, the amount of things in the room, it's not about the things, but the amount of people that she touches in life, uh, totally took for granted. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> for sure. But I mean, everything happens for a reason. God's got a plan. But anyway, um, so that was a hard thing. And her dad was there, and uh, dad's wife. Of course, they, uh, hey, Ryan, how you doing? Whatever. And they get up and go smoke a cigarette or whatever. And Billy comes in, which is the, uh, her, her boyfriend. And, uh, I guess he thought the kind of the same thing. He's like, well, I didn't tell anybody where you're at. I don't know how you got here. You know? <laughs> <clears throat> but I just say, I, I use that scenario to say that I, when I apologize to her, I talked to her a couple days after she got out and just really, really talked. And really, we hadn't had that conversation. And really kind of, our relationship has, it's not a complete 180 yet, but it has turned immensely. And mind you, she was on my never list. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But since I had taken the time to really let God work on things and do things through a tragedy, he's made it positive. Absolutely. For sure. And she's only got four more treatments left. Yes. And, um, she shaved her head not so long ago. And, uh, so now, you know, I go over there. I go over there and pick the kids up after school on Wednesdays. We hang out until Bible study, and I get them every Sunday. Um, she's cool. Wow, you know, now, things that have changed for you. Right? Man, yeah. so, listen, yes. Linda. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's just been great. It's huge. Yeah. It is so huge. And she... Uh, She's moving right along, relationships going good. But it's it's still it's a continual thing. Like I have to constantly look at me and how how am I doing this? How am I thinking about this? It's not about her. Right. It's not about me blaming her, pointing a finger to her. I have to look at me and how am I handling this situation? Right. Because she still says some stuff that makes me angry and stuff that I don't understand. But I got I got to look at me. How are you going to do it? What's your perception? Right. <laughs> How are you? What is your perspective? Now my perspective has changed. It went from worldly and not getting her to I still don't get you, but this is it's a God thing, and, and the kids are the important thing. Yes. You know what I mean? You, you and your person are more important than you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes. dude, I gotta hold on to that. Yes. I gotta hold on to that. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and so Sunday when I uh, had talked to the other person uh, that was on my never list. I didn't even realize until I walked out of church. I was like, he's on my never list. Wow. And I'm like, thank you. That is so you know, it is, it it's is crazy. So it's super crazy. Cause like, you don't realize, like you said a second ago, you don't realize how yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> he's, he's doing his thing, man. Yeah. It's so yeah. crazy. One thing that keeps coming to me about this list that you have, that you make, um, why is there, because when you are living for yourself and when you are selfish, you you create your never calm. Okay. There's not supposed to be a never calm, okay. but we have created the separation. Mm -hmm. And because of whatever our perspective is, if there's enough, if we've created enough separation, we think that we can never attain that. We can never get back there. Mm -hmm. um, but when we start changing our perspective yeah. and our perceptions, mm -hmm. then we get back closer start and closer. To God and, and closer to ourselves. Right. And then he starts bringing those back into your life that you were supposed to have mm -hmm. there in the first place yes. or that had never been there anyway. So I to see. answer your question, then he eliminates <laughs> the never right. problem. It's like right. that. <laughs> you just put your own target on your own. Right. <laughs> right. I'll show you another. Yeah. Right, for sure. Exactly. For sure. That's for what sure. you think. Yeah. It's Absolutely. so it's so crazy. And like uh my mother and I I mean I I don't want to sit and take up all this time talking about me, man, but um there's just there's been a lot. There's been a lot that is, that has gone on and a lot of people don't know. And I'm struggling. I'm struggling so hard with my with my diet. It's uh it works. Like to where it's like so hard to be accepted, I guess. You know, um, for just an employee, yeah, I'm a, I'm a good employee. I don't care what they think. I'm a, I'm a great employee. You know what I mean? Um, do a good job. I please people. I mean, I've done serving for 20 years. Pretty good at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this place is just like I keep nitpicking and looking for any little thing or whatever. And 
It's like there's not. I'm not perfect. Yeah, you're gonna find a mistake. But they're few and far between for sure. And I, I can't tell if it's jealousy or if it's uh they're scared or whatever. I don't know. I really don't know. We have a, a general manager in from California and he's kind of he's training our new general manager and him and I are cool. Like he gave me a little dot on the board the other day. You know, you get these little dots when you help out and do stuff, he gave me a dot. I was like, that's the first one I've gotten six months. He goes, Really? I was like, Yeah. I was like, I'm kinda of scared of what's gonna happen when you <laughs> you know, but um, it's neither here nor there. I mean, we all, we've said this, you told me before, God don't want you to train, he won't let you be there, you know what I mean? So, I get that. And I guess this is another one of my trash bags. I, I have a whole say, trash bag full things. of fear. What are you, you're supposed to be learning, though, while you're there, because you're going through this, and you continue to go through this mm -hmm. cycle of, I don't feel accepted. There's something about you that you need to look into that you were supposed to learn to get over that hump. That's of, what I was going to what it is. Test. There is it's something you are yeah. being tested and you're mm -hmm. and you're missing it. So just keep looking deeper. You just gotta keep looking deeper, Frank. And and you know like he's gonna <laughs> take care of you. He has so far. True. Every day. Every day he's taking care of you. And our so. and, and our life comes in seasons. Right. I don't know how long your season's gonna be there. You know, or know. anywhere. You know. Right. But our life is in seasons. Mm -hmm. Truth, truth. Well, we'll figure it out. I think it's going to be all right. <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> I mean, it'll be all right one way or another. For <laughs> right. sure, but I'll be there till I'm not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Sure. I think it's. I think it's really. Uh, it's a God thing. It. That's. The, that's what it is. How. Now you two have met. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have. You know, similar situation. <laughs> met your situation. Right. Well, and I kind of have a same kind of situation with you, even um, as far as the God just take me out of here. Yeah, I'm done. I have battled depression mm -hmm. for so long, yeah. um, and then my father passed away in November, and um, just everything started welling up, and just everything was going crazy. And really, I think it's Frank and I was doing the show. My life in the past, I have never dealt with, you know, I never really settled any of it. God forgive me for all of it, but I never settled it with him. And I never let go. That's where all the depression was. I know now that that's where it all was. And I was so suicidal for so long. And I kept that to myself. There's a lot of people that didn't know yeah. how yeah. desperately I wanted to be gone. Yeah, man, I, I get it. I get it because I was there. And I, one night after my dad passed away, and I, I was just out in the yard, and I, I can't do this anymore. I'm tired. I can't. This is done. I can't do it. You've got to, you've got to take this away. And mine wasn't dramatic like yours. <laughs> I was fortunate to have this prayer and then go to bed and wake up the next morning and literally just wake up and say, okay, you woke me up. You didn't take me home then I have something else to do. And so I don't know what that is, but I do have something else to do. Well, let me go a step further with mine. The reason I didn't go, I mean, it is a it is a miracle that I did wake up because mm -hmm. the next morning, because I didn't, when I, when I finally, they finally got me to come to, I kept saying, just take me home, just take me home, just take me home, because I had marijuana in my system. And I didn't want to go to the hospital and have them find that in my system. Mm -hmm. So I went home mm -hmm. and went to sleep with a severe concussion mm -hmm. and woke up spitting up half dollar size blood oh. clots. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know what they're saying yeah. now? They're saying that sleep's good on concussion now. Like, I, I don't know. Well, like, I remember. Um, well, they say it because uh, the stillness or whatever is helping your, your brain to heal, that bruise to heal. Um, mm. But mm. I remember I got so scared because uh, I used to get picked on a lot in high school. And uh, this dude stuffs me in a trash can and kicks the trash can over and my head smacked the ground. Oh. I, remember, I remember feeling it psh, lights out. And it was by, like, when I came to, there was a door and I saw my dad's truck outside. He waited on me. 
everybody was around me or whatever, and they were like, dude, you were out for like three minutes or something. You know, I, I couldn't, I was so tired. Heaven says, what's more? You know what I mean? I was so, I couldn't, I couldn't get it together. Uh -huh. Anyway, so I get in the truck, and I remember laying my head against the window, and I go upstairs, and I didn't want to, I've always been the type of people, I don't want to bug nobody, I don't want to bother you, you know what I mean? So I didn't, and my parents, mama was such a uh, worry wart anyway, you know, and we were poor, and daddy worked a bunch, and uh, mom's always worried about bills, and this and the other, and like the last thing they need is for me to come home talking about I need to go to the hospital, because you're already looking at a $3,000 bill just right off top, you know what I mean? And I knew we couldn't pay. So anyway, um, I'm sitting up on my bed. And the next thing I know, let's see, well, that was probably about four or five o'clock. The next thing I know, I wake up and it's like light outside. And I go downstairs and uh, well, I was like, I was wondering if you were okay. And I was like, what do you mean? I think I slept like a day and a half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and like when she said, when she told me what day it was, I was scared. And like, I think I started crying or something because she was like, what's wrong? And I wasn't gonna. I had to tell her, you know what I mean? Because I was like, I don't know if something's wrong with me or not. Like, I, ah, I want to figure it out. You know what I mean? Uh, now we can see. Yeah, I did some crazy damage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin says, here's a question: What's more important, purpose or time? Purpose. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes you have to make time for that purpose, <laughs> and that's the hard part. Figuring out the purpose. Yes, that's another one. That's yes. a that's a thing. You have to figure it out, and then you have to be willing to make the time. Right. To well, take that, the time. That's huge. I was talking to a gentleman at work. He always comes in. He has, his his clothes are uh, dry clean, and he always looks nice and all sorts of stuff. And know what I know about life? Like you have to set up your life in such a way, uh, eliminate distractions as much as possible. Mm -hmm. This is the way I want things to go. And I think a lot of times um, we add this and add that, trying to do things, but we get so that puts us further and further away from the purpose. Right. You know what I mean? Um, right. And I, it's totally self induced. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the pur purpose is way more important, but how many. Uh, well, and here's the thing many, I've uh, got a friend of mine that's in a halfway house up here in Cincinnati, and I'm, tried, I'm trying to get him to get in contact with Kevin and um, figure things out but he says something about he don't want to stay here he don't want to be in cincinnati blah, blah, blah. it's not his desire i'm like there you go you're still saying the same thing it's not your desire you have to get rid of your desire that's the thing you have to let it be god's will not your desire because you don't know what god wants from you as long as you keep your desire in front <laughs> When I was going through those steps with, uh, with Aquarius, one of the most profound things he said to me was, uh, you know, the, we do these things out of selfishness. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, we're like, okay. And that's, selfishness is one of those cliche words we use in church. We don't really think about it. And I didn't really think about it. I spent probably three or four hours with this man this day. And I said, well, he goes, uh, why don't you have a good relationship with your mom? And I was like, well, I feel this way. He said, he feel. Like, I feel Okay, I get to see that. Something else came up, and I was like, "Well, I think this." And he goes, "Who think?" I think, and probably about the fourth time he did it, he was like, "You see how many times you're being selfish?" Like, ah, stop it! <laughs> oh man, like you're right. And I, think, I do that now a lot. Like, how how much do I think about it? when I do say I? Why am I saying I? Is that from myself? You know what I mean? Some of that personal inventory. Anyway, we got to wrap things up here. We really appreciate you, Miss Catherine you, Danger. Ladies. Thank you for coming in, Miss Sandy Turner. Thanks thank you for coming us. in. Yes, uh, one more time, April nineteenth, uh, New Hope Christian Center, uh, Kentucky, is sponsoring an event starting at eleven a.m. Everyone is invited to walk with us and carry the cross through the streets of Newport and gather with us at the end of the route at the World Peace Bell. God has laid upon our hearts to declare over the people of Newport and the neighboring cities that he is the God of the city and the Lord of the people in and around it. Please join us as we read the declaration God has given us together, taking up our cross and following our Lord, starting at 11 a.m., 941 Central Avenue in Newport, Kentucky, with the service to follow, spoken by the Kevin Johnson at the World Peace Bell. 
Uh, please contact Sandy Hill Turner at 859-5120-885 or Catherine Daner at 859-462-0921 for more information. All this is based off Mark 834, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We must do that daily. Thank you, guys. Thank you to Jesse Onade down at Flip Daddy's. Thank you to New Reality at the Fort Mitchell Baptist Church, um, New Hope Christian Center, and the Refinery Church. <laughs> this has been another episode of OK, Let's Be Frank on 1320 AM WCBG, The Voice. Yeah. Yay. That was cool. That was fun. You thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, God. <laughs> Yes. That's how that happened. Yeah. Isn't he great? Yeah. <laughs>